All right. Good afternoon. Today, this is the second lecture in the series on the names of God. And the second name, we're, we're taking them in alphabetical order, is the word Abba. Abba means father. Abba is perhaps the best known name of God in the world. What's interesting is we only find it in three places. Twice the Lord Jesus Christ uses it. Once the Apostle Paul uses it in the book of Romans under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But each time it's talking about God the Father as a personal God, the one from which we come, the one that we honor, respect, do homage to, and that we love. So, Join me in this study. Father, I do pray and ask that you bless this reading of your word, bless this study, enrich our minds, hearts, souls, and spirits. The goal of this study in theology, which is the study of God, theology, to know the names is that you can understand them so you can pray more effectively. It's also to give you a deeper relationship with the Lord God. Because Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. God describes his character, his attributes, and his holy will through his name. We learn about God through his name. So here we go. Abba, which means father. And he said, Abba, father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. That's Jesus in the garden where he was praying for the Lord God, the father, if he was possible to take this cup from him. And that cup was not being crucified, but being separated from him. When he cries out, Eloi, Eloi, Lambak Saptani, on the cross, it's my God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, why have you forsaken me? That's the sting of death when Jesus was separated from God the Father and his mercies and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the sins of the world were placed on him, he had to be separated from them. Jesus had never been apart from the Father. Before eternity began, they were together. And that's what he feared the most. He says in the second verse, You have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear. You have received the spirit of adoption, whereby, and it means through the power of the Holy Spirit, you being joined to God the Father by that, we now cry, Abba, Father. The Father of Jesus Christ is now our Father. And that is an incredible experience. It's God the Father that we should know, that we should pray to. He says in the last verse, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We find those three verses uh, in the scriptures in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, Romans 8, 15, and Galatians 4, 6. God's name, Abba, is only used in those three instances, but yet it's the most well-known name in the world. I mean, there was the band Abba, which probably cause some type of, of looking for it, but it's a name that is incredibly deep, and it's because it's so personal. A father carries a place in a person's life that cannot be replaced. Even when you're young, the father is the one you always run to. It's the one you look for. It's the one you brag about to others. But even when you get to be my age and life is past, just about gone, you understand that your father, he means more to you than, than ever before. He carries a place within him that cannot be replaced. And this is the way it should be. The more we mature in God, the more dear the father should be to us. This name describes a person that has matured in understanding. It is not the young child that would say Abba. No, they wouldn't say this word because the word Abba is a word that is spoken by somebody that is matured and understands the significance of the father. That's what it means. A child doesn't use it. It's the mature person that does. It means you have a deep love, a deep respect when you address him as father. It's a reverence. It finds its roots in the Hebrew. It comes from the, the word which we would pronounce ab, but it's ab. A-B in the Hebrew is father. It comes about into the Greek as A-B-B-A, which is the word Abba. But in the Hebrew, it's just Ab. And the equivalent in the English is not to say father, but to say my personal father, 
This is my one and only personal father. The title Abba serves as both a personal name, a proper name, and the title that he holds in your life. It means, just as your father is the one that gave you existence, God, your father, is the one that has given you life and existence. He's done that through the, the death of Jesus Christ. By joining in the death of Christ, we join into his life. It means more than that, though. He didn't just give you life and existence, but he literally keeps giving you life and existence. And it means, when we use this term Abba, we're speaking to the one that wants to be involved in our life. He wants to be a part of your life. I miss my kids and grandkids more than anything else. I want to be a part of their life. And as a grandparent and a parent, you understand what I'm saying. As a child, you wouldn't. Because it's not until you get older that you see the most important things in life are your family. Ironically, this name was never used by the Israelites or the Jews to refer to God. We only hear the Lord Jesus Christ use it, and then the Apostle Paul through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You see, until Christ died for our sins, our sins separate us from God. A person that is separated from God cannot use the term Abba. Because it means the one who has given them life, the ability to live, provides for them, and wants to be involved in their life. He doesn't stop watching over you. There's something different about when you walk into a crowd and your father's behind you or next to you. I mean, you can take a child, and if you send him into a crowd or an uncertain place, they have anxieties and fear. But there's something about when they walk with their father, they don't fear. That's the way it is with our Heavenly Father. When we understand the term Abba, we understand that he's still watching over us. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us because we are a small child in his eyes. Our appreciation should grow as we learn more about God our Father. So I pray and ask that, that the Lord will give you the significant understanding of what the name Abba means. Why don't you join me in this prayer? Let's pray to Abba, our personal Heavenly Father. I'll pray slower so you can join me. Dear Abba, my Father, Lord, you are so wonderful and gracious. You have given me life and taken care of me. You have commanded, and it has came forth. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for caring for my soul. Father, it was you that sent the Lord Jesus Christ to earth so he could live for me and then die on my behalf. He was your lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. But Father, Abba, I praise you that Jesus has risen victorious. He has conquered sin, death, and the grave, and he's given me that victory. You have now adopted me through him to be your personal child and to be in your heavenly kingdom. Please help me to grow in fellowship with you. Grant me wisdom and understanding that I may have a deeper walk in fellowship with you. Let me see you move on my behalf so I can give you praise and glorify your name among those I meet. Abba, my Father, I want to love you with more of my heart, more of my soul and being. Please give me the grace to do just that. Squelch all the sin that lives within me and give me more of your Holy Spirit. Fill my body, your temple, with the Holy Spirit and make me a shining example, a witness for all the others to see. For you alone are worthy. I rejoice in your name. I thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. It is in the holy name of my Lord Jesus Christ that I pray, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I pray the Lord has blessed you in this prayer and that you will continue in this study on the names of God. Lord bless you. This is Dr. Not signing off.